Thank you guys so much for all the constant love and support. Y'all have changed me in his life. Y'all have changed me and Ruby's life. Y'all have saved us, y'all have given us purpose. And we can never repay you for that. What's going on, y'all? It is your boy Veli. Two eyes back with another video, and today I am on a villainous channel. I am joining villains themselves and assisting them. Oh, uh, <sighs> Why am I trying to talk like I'm a fucking a librarian or something, bruh? Today is the Suicide Voice Iceberg, ladies and gentlemen, and I will be your first host of the video. The first layer of this iceberg is called the Hardcore Suicide Boys Fan Layer. And who better to discuss the fans than your boy? I will be going over 25 moments in this layer that only hardcore suicide fans and suicide boys fans i don't think i want hardcore suicide fans in here let's buckle in and let's enjoy the ride pause <laughs> oh god the tweet that started it all on the night of december 13th 2011 ruby replied to a tweet scrim put out asking him to email him some beats scrim later replied right back saying he got a new phone. Not sure which beats those ended up being, but it's cited at the moment that these two linked up started their journey. You'll see this in the beginning of quite a few videos and listed in some songs. Slam Dunkasaur is a name that Ruby used to use for a few years when the boys were starting out their career together. He's produced a couple of instrumental EPs under this name. There's also a YouTube channel named this with only one video uploaded. Yeah, Slam Dunkasaur, ladies and gentlemen. Ruby's punk rock career. We got into this a little bit in part one, but Ruby releasing Tragic Love Songs to Study 2 Volume 5 is only his latest punk rock project, and I'd assume he'd have many more coming with the uh, teasers we've been getting of late. He was in multiple bands in his younger days, Vapor Rats, Mop Sick, and his multiple songs out there for y'all to listen to if you guys decide to look into it. He started his first band at 13 years old playing punk primarily for 12 years before calling up Scrim to try rap. He mostly always played the drums in these bands, but can play many other instruments, including the guitar and violin. Also, might be worth mentioning that he said several times before he quit doing stuff with bands because he saw himself better solo and not needing to deal with the conflicting opinions bandmates differing his. Scrim's trap music career. This refers to Scrim's early works. Earlier trap music was a huge influence on Scrim, and it's what made up his first few musical ventures. Original cover arts. This refers to the original images to the covers of their tapes, albums, etc. Basically, the images are edited with a filter or other things over them. There's a post on Reddit by Spooky underscore Black with two K's at the end. Yo. That has album slash tape versions versus the original. Yo, you're 1k away from fucking tweaking. This also could be referring to the fact that some songs were initially released as singles, therefore having their own individual album art, but then were later added to the tapes, albums, and etc. Deleted songs. So the boys have deleted songs before when they were focusing on their SoundCloud. 
couple of these songs would include Royal Second, Silent Night, Ironville, Cup Full of Flames, and others. A couple of these were uploaded to YouTube to listen to by a few people years ago, including a couple of iconic ones that have their own entries deeper in the iceberg. Neighbors Ate My Zombies. <laughs> this is a project by Ruby and someone else named Taz, which was made up of five songs back in 2012. Snippets and unreleased demos. I can't even begin to explain how many times the boys have dropped snippets and unreleased songs on platforms like Instagram, especially Snapchat. I'm sure as well as others, the boys love to see the fans go crazy over the smallest hints of their music, just like many other artists would. And they've been doing it for years, that's the thing. They'll continue to do it as they had just literally have, as it's a huge part of their appeal and fan base. Gotta mention Forget It here. The song was originally previewed as a snippet way back in 2018. Many people took it upon themselves to release fan-made full versions of the song. The full actual version of the song wasn't released until around three years later in 2021. Original poem slash I am the shipwreck. We talked about this in part one, how at the bottom of the Clouds is Witnesses video, there are words that pass along that are not subtitles. They're actually a poem written by Ruby. And also in streaming services, the version of Kill Yourself Part 2, the song is extended to include Ruby saying the exact same poem. So uh, yeah, and it's also a little hard to hear him because of the audio, but this is definitely the exact same poem. DJ Scrim with that 808. I'm not sure what came first, this tag or the scrim on the beat tag, but this is yet another producer tag. Uh, one of the earliest at that. Reused verses. Aside from reusing specific lines and phrases, entire verses from my research have never been reused, but it's very common to hear many of the same rhyme schemes and filler lines reused on multiple songs. By the way, this is a regular thing for many artists to do. So there's nothing wrong with it. Ruby used to also say Frozen Shogun way too much. <laughs> Alternate cover arts, SoundCloud, parentheses. Couldn't find any differences from the cover arts that were released everywhere and what's uploaded on SoundCloud. But a Reddit post had basically archived what were the original posted cover arts. Bones Beef. What the f we briefly touched on this in part one, but essentially Bones is an underground legend. The boys and Bones collabed on Maple Syrup in 2014, but in 2017, the song Taking Out the Trash dropped. And in the song, Bones said, popping pills is for pussies, and at the time, Scrim was heavily using drugs. And when I say heavily, I mean um, heavy D, heavily. Nigga, I, I, Scrim would go on to call out Bones multiple times, but it didn't take too long for this beef to get patched up. And Scrim had issued a long heartfelt apology to Bones and took a lot of responsibility for how he responded. Antarctica music video. The original video was taken down for some time, but while they were dealing with that, they were also dealing with the Dead Mouse scandal. But sometime in 2022, the video was put back up. Yeah, screw that guy. OG Suicide Boys merch. So there's a ton of this that's extremely rare, but because the guys have been selling merch for about seven years, there's a ton of people I've found on Reddit with OG merch. Pretty damn sure most of that stuff is priceless at this point, especially considering how far they've come. But in my research, I've also found a ridiculous amount of fakes. So be careful out there when you're buying merch or if you're trying to buy OG merch, you already know what time it is. The scammers are hefty these days. Also weird thing I found while researching, but Sam Hyde apparently sold merch that parodied the boys before. He's been mentioned in songs before, but since the iceberg doesn't have an entry on him, we won't be going into any of that. Ruby's tattoos. Like Scrim, Ruby has a lot of tattoos. He's got Don't Care, 
with one letter on each of his fingers. Seventh ward on the top of his left wrist. Skeleton praying on his forearm. A couple more tats on his calves. And no photos at the top of his forehead now, recently. And yeah, he's, he's got a lot of tattoos. What do you guys want me to say? He has one on his freaking ass or something. Gotta mention the crazy amount of Suicide Boys fans that got that same exact praying skeleton because of Ruby and probably because of Eternal Grey. I'm sure you can make a collage of fans that got that tattoo at this point. Secondhand demo. There are in fact multiple versions of secondhand. The Spotify, SoundCloud, and YouTube versions are all different. I didn't even know that. Uh, what the fuck? The changes range from order of certain verses. The beats all have slight differences in others. Unreleased features. In part one, we mentioned their track with Lil Peep as the bridges burned that was leaked by Omen X. I, 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 I don't know Roman numerals, guys. I couldn't tell you that number of my life depended on it. And Craig Zinn with their verses in it. In terms of generally unreleased songs, there are tons of these that if you look hard enough, you can find. And honestly, not sure of just how many there are, to be honest. <laughs> oh, I already said honestly. What the fuck? Bonus tracks. There's quite a few of these you can search up. For example, Ruby's Shipwreck poem is listed as a bonus track for Grey Grey. Ruby's Vine account. Vine. The precursor to Musical.ly, which was the precursor to TikTok. In the mid-2010s, this was the app that took the world by storm and pretty much changed online content and memes permanently. And yeah, Ruby had one. You can check some of them out too, probably on YouTube, and that's about it. Just letting y'all know though, humor was very different back then, about 10 years ago, so yeah. Just a warning. Unreleased albums and collab tapes. We spoke a bit about this earlier, but there's many unreleased stuff out there from songs to beats to tapes from these guys. Apparently, they were supposed to be featured on XXX Tentacion's Bad Vibes Forever years ago, but it ended up being a posthumous album. They also had it in the works with Juicy J, an album I'm talking about. I don't know if I had it in the works with Juicy J. What did they have in the works with Juicy J, Veli? But yeah, this also covers the unreleased album with Juicy J entry in the iceberg, motherfuckers. Scrims Lost Tapes. This again refers to Scrims early work in 2012. The mixtape, hashtag drug flow to <laughs> the orchard. The Orchard is a music distribution company that apparently has a history of falsely copyright claiming music all over YouTube. They got into a copyright issue for the first time with the boys and you'll see their name under some Suicide Boys music videos on YouTube. Pretty sure it's just another case of YouTube's flawed and exploitable copyright claim system BS. Ruby's Finsta. So Finsta is a fake Instagram account and Ruby had apparently confirmed one time that he did have one of these years ago. It's not exactly the same as starting a new account like how he did for Duck Boy and the project this year, but I guess it's very similar to that. The real Ruby and Scrim are not, I mean, are dead. They're dead. Don't research this. So aside from the legendary Ruby and Scrim died in the car crash post, there was one instance where on Twitter somebody said that they know the real Suicide Boys and that they're both dead. <laughs> Which led to Scrim himself commenting lol what? This is probably unrelated to the iceberg entry because of Gage, the creator of the iceberg, commenting somebody saw the iceberg, which obviously means the entry was there before this comment. There's also this fake news website that made a post on Ruby dying. It's really stupid, but yeah, so much for not researching this entry. <laughs> Okay, mind you guys, so this is a very tough read for your boy. Uh, there's a lot of errors in this, a lot of annotations that could go into this Reddit post. So bear with me because I'm trying to turn it into normal English, but let's go ahead and read this. They died in a horrible car crash on January 6th. 2016. Scrim was high and lost control of the car. Adi was in the passenger seat. They were later confirmed as dead. 
Oh god. Not by a doctor or the paramedics, but by a Reddit post sourced from a cell phone with a blink uh, directly open in fucking Safari. It's like, come on guys, this is clearly satire in my opinion, and I feel it's bait. So, what happened then? Scrim Senior, father of Slick Sloth, wanting to continue his son's work along with Adi's family, hired two people similar, not uncanny resemblance. Remember that, guys, they don't look anything like the old Suicide Boys. But, to Adi and Scrim so they could act like the Suicide Boys and not let any suspicious doubts about their disappearance. This is hilarious. This is like fucking hilarious. Scrim Senior, father of Slick Sloth. It's like that basically confirms my belief in this theory being a troll. But they continue. Germ, an old friend of the original Suicide Boys, knows about the fake Suicide Boys in quotation marks in a deleted tweet. He stated, man, those niggas pretending to be my friends know shit about my music. Eyes open. Even Black Smurf got distant of them because they are not the real Suicide Boys I know, according to him. The real Scriminati didn't had plan- didn't had- okay, this is ridiculous, bro. Didn't had plans to release new Kill Yourself mixtapes until then. Their only focus was on a project that would be released after the Dirty Nasty Suicide mixtape. Sadly, it won't see the daylight anymore because the fake boys trashed it. Oh god, this is way worse than the Suicide Boys were better in 2015, guys. This is bad. This is like good old-fashioned 2015 trolling. <laughs> like, seriously. Just from these typos uh, in the last paragraph... And throughout the whole thing, I can tell this guy was just ready to wrap it up after probably spending 10 minutes of typing bullshit. And uh, hopefully none of you guys fell for it, as it's hilarious to look back on, but it's kind of also sad to see people actually kind of double down on it or either fall for the bait and kind of like try to warn people about it. And it, it is ridiculous. You guys basically did exactly what this guy wanted <laughs> But yeah, it has been your boy Veli Two Wise. Go ahead and follow me on Instagram. I don't, bruh, I don't know. Bruh. I'm just I'm Veli with Two Wise. I'm everywhere. You might randomly see me comment on a post or something and laugh at it. Who knows? But I'm gonna pass this on to my boy Ghost Type with two T's, obviously. But yes, I love you guys. Uh, why am I so awkward? Thank you guys so much for having me once again. I'm super excited to be a part of this. Let's just get straight into it. G59 affiliations. Starting off with Slim Gucci, who was one of Scrim's younger brothers, who even produced a few songs for the boys. He's in his early 20s, extremely talented, and even put out an album. So go check that out and show some support. Crystal Meth, a DJ and producer that started working for the boys years ago. In this Mask Gorilla interview, Crystal Meth describes how, through Fat Nick, he met Puya, who led him to the Suicide Boys during 2017, and he knew Don Crez, who was the previous DJ for the boys. Kyle Leonison and Dana Biondi. Sorry if I butchered any of those names, I did my best. They're the Suicide Boys managers. Scrim mentions in the How the Suicide Boys Became a Multi-Million Dollar Brand You've Never Heard Of interview that Kyle was a friend from high school that then brought Dana on board to help the boys with the business side of things. Trasher Slip. Trasher Slip is an artist and she does work for G59. She's also involved in quite a few controversies because apparently she's out here scamming people. It's known that she created the cover art for Long Term Effects of Suffering. And an Easter egg about this cover is that the woman in it appears to be Trasher Slip herself. Moving on to the Shroomhead collabs. Shroomhead is a producer from Florida who worked with the boys on Sushi back in 2014 and Bottom Feeders in 2016. Unfortunately, Shroomhead did pass away in 2019, as by the sounds of it, he was going through an extremely rough last couple of years of his life. Not gonna go into it, but RIP. Reused Instrumentals for my research, there's only one specific instrumental that was reused, that being the Muddy Blunts instrumental used for the song That Time I Got High with Slick by Chetta. If there's any other reused instrumentals, let us know in the comments, but we're going to be talking about the Suicide Boys sampling themselves. There's been a ton of instances where the boys will sample themselves. One of the greatest posts on the G59 Reddit was posted by Cobbled, and it contains a doc that includes almost all of the samples the Suicide Boys have ever used and exactly how they were used. I recommend all of you guys checking this out. It's super cool, incredible job. Unfortunately, it does end with Kill Yourself Part 10, 
but regardless, super awesome. Diamond Girl. This is a song off Ruby's solo album Pluto, produced by Scrim. Go check it out. It's basically about how Ruby ain't having no kids. Apparently it was up under another artist's name on some streaming services, the Tumblr accounts. I looked up to see if Scrim and Ruby had Tumblr accounts, but I couldn't find anything. Instead, what I found was cringe. Pure, unadulterated cringe. I couldn't take it anymore, so I left Tumblr, and nope, I ain't going back. Members only, Buffet Boys, G59, and XXX, Tentacion. First off, Members Only is a group started by X and Ski Mask, the Slump God. Second, Buffet Boys is now disbanded, but it's a group started by Puya, Fat Nick, and Mikey the Magician. We already talked about G59, but all of these groups were making huge noise in the SoundCloud era, and for this one-time event, they were all in the same room for a concert. I'm unsure where exactly this happened, but it was uploaded back in 2016 by Murder Toys Matt songs that we won't get sued for but at the end of the day we all gonna die anyway. These are essentially a collection of songs that the boys made that contained legally acquired samples and everything, hence the name. We've talked about all the copyright issues that they've had in the past and this was one of the tongue-in-cheek references to all of that. Crystal Meth mentions a project like this back in the Masquerilla interview, but since that was years ago, it's safe to say that this is mostly just an entry based off the idea that the boys should do this instead of something that was truly in the works. Never say never, there's never a bad time for them to consider this, but unless it's teased, I don't think we should expect it anytime soon, if ever. Next, my favorite, Suicide Boys AMVs Trash. Trash is an unbelievably successful and talented YouTube channel with nearly 5 million subs that's been posting AMVs to underground music for years now. They use tons of different anime for the videos and they're a huge factor in pushing different artists careers like X and The Boys and many other artists. Huge missed opportunity to not use the Bleach anime for the song Bleach by Suicide Boys. Their most popular Suicide Boys video is the Berserk mashup with Do You Believe in God and Opana. I have a note here that says if you haven't seen Berserk, please go watch it. But I myself haven't seen Berserk, so I guess I should go watch it. I, I don't know, I'm sorry. I myself have spent an unreasonable amount of time watching Naruto AMVs. Scrim hates I Wanna Die in New Orleans. Many fans felt like he legit didn't even try on most of that album. We now know that it's mostly due to his drug addiction at the time, but he was also saying he was working on getting sober during all of this, so it kinda just sounded like he was about to OD in the booth. Not sure, me personally, I really like the album. Bandcamp is another service similar to SoundCloud. From my research, I couldn't find what came first, but basically using this site, people were able to download the songs the boys had for free. Next up, Scrim's Gold Teeth and Ruby's Grill. Back in 2017, Scrim would use gold grills a lot, and so would Ruby. You see them wear it here and there, but that's about it. Ruby was on probation. I couldn't find anything on this. He did go to rehab, but that's not really the same as probation. Suicide Boys and G59, SoundCloud. This refers to a SoundCloud playlist that includes all of the G59 crew. Grade A Livestream, The Shine LA. You can look up the live stream on YouTube, but essentially this was during the very first Grade A tour in 2019, and it's just a really hyped concert. Go check it out. Thank you guys. Now I'm going to go ahead and pass this on. Appreciate you, Ghost Hype. It's your boy, Villains, and thank you so much for watching the video up until this point. I promise you guys there's so many more surprises on the way. You guys are not ready. I'm telling you right now. Stick around, but let's get right back into the iceberg. Swag Tooth Collabs. G double O D music video. Swag Tooth were originally a duo, their names being Choir Boy Dank and Ouija Mac. They did eventually fall out in 2017 though. G double O D is a song they made featuring the boys in 2015, which is a pretty regular stoner song until you watch the video. The video is basically the sock puppets and trippy effects taking the place of all the four people in the song, and it's like really goofy. Couldn't find any reason why this was done though. Maybe they couldn't link up for an official music video, but yeah, definitely go check this one out. One of the more creative entries on this list. Scrim Suicide. This is an old song that dropped in the very early 2010s that's up on YouTube to listen to. Apparently there's some misconceptions saying this is the song that inspired the Suicide Boys name, but according to the No Jumper interview, this is incorrect. But yeah, go give it a listen if you haven't. Nightmare on the North Side, Mandela Effect. 
So according to this Reddit post, some people remember Scream's album being called Nightmare From The North Side and not Nightmare On The North Side. However, as pointed out by some people, the From was and still is on the SoundCloud version of the project. DB1 and Slayer Merc G59 affiliation. DB1 is Dana Biondi's name on many platforms. However, he already had a separate entry with his name that Ghost Type went over, so I'm assuming this was a double entry mistake. Slayer Merc is in charge of the merch for G59, and he's also listed as a mod on the G59 sub, and you'll see him in many pictures during concerts and stuff like that. Grey Gods 3. This is the third project in the Grey God series that's been rumored to drop for years now. Probably not gonna happen for some time, but at least Scrim did mention it. And an update to the century, Remy and Ruby were actually teasing it on Instagram not too long ago, so we're probably closer to it now more than ever. SMD YB produced by Budwire. SMD YB. Give it a second, I'm pretty sure y'all can figure out what that means. This is a song that dropped in 2020 by Dash that was produced by Scrim. And yeah, go check it out. NYC PBA tweet. The Police Benevolent Association of the City of New York has a Twitter, and back a few years ago, Screamin liked a tweet they made where they found a phone that had a photo of a Swiss blade or box cutter, and on it were the infamous letters FTP. It makes sense why the police would take these letters as a threat, obviously. Suicide Boys x Ski Mask the Slump God Unfortunately, these three don't have a song together, they really need one, but Ski was a guest on the Grade 8 tour of 2022, as well as the 2023 London tour. As of recently, they've teased something could be dropping sooner than later. Scrim needs glasses. Scrim has seen multiple times wearing glasses in the earlier days that seem to be prescription. Over the years, it's been on and off, but maybe he mentions needing them on the low in an interview or something. Censored version of Clyde Clyde, I hope at least one of my ex-girlfriends hears this, is the third and final track of I No Longer Fear the Razor Guarding My Heel 2. In this song, the boys talk about their past relationships and how they look back on them with regret, which is why Clyde references, you know, Bonnie and Clyde. But the entry refers to the censored version, which I could not find, but apparently the girls' names that are said in it are basically bleeped out. The less I know, the better sample. This time, talking about I No Longer Fear the Razor Guard in My Hill 3, the boys sampled the Tame Impala song, The Less I Know The Better. For their song, if you were to get what you deserve, you would know what the bottom of a tire tastes like. God damn. Free Gucci music video version. Free Gucci is a song with a video by the boys and Black Smurf that they made back in 2015. The century refers to the fact that the music video version doesn't start with the piano slash beat that the regular version does. Instead, it plays about 17 seconds of the song. It's about a six hour drive from the same tape Free Gucci is from, and that's basically a project pass sample. 100 Blunt's SoundCloud version. A classic song from the boys that dropped all the way back in 2014. The SoundCloud version of the song starts with the This Is Scrim beat producer tag, along with Scrim saying the classic 99 and 2000, and finally the DJ Scrim with that 808. The YouTube version just has a fade in of the instrumental and into Scrim's verse. Vapor Rats. As mentioned previously, this is Ruby's old band that he was in in the early 2010s. There's also a misconception surrounding the band because their album had released after Ruby had left. There's also a video of them during their 2013 summer tour on YouTube with barely any views, so definitely go check it out. You'll see Ruby in a couple short sections throughout it. Cult 2. Cult 2 refers to the song that dropped originally exclusively on SoundCloud in 2014. It's by Queen Michael and it features the boys. There's also a music video for it. Shout out to the Reddit for the link and yeah, definitely a very rarely talked about song and video from the boys. Time for the next host of this iceberg, one of the friends I've made on this journey. You may have heard of him. I'm gonna go ahead and drop his intro. Yo, what the fuck is up, guys? I'm very fucking happy to be here. Big shout out to Villains for letting me be a part of this, putting this whole thing together. Follow, subscribe, everybody involved in this video. Obviously, fuck with me if you don't already. Subscribe to my channel. I do reaction videos mostly. But let's go ahead and get back into this motherfucking iceberg, man. Chopper City. I believe that this entry refers to the artists that Scrim collabed with back in 2011. They seemingly made a mixtape titled Louisiana Purchase that was uploaded to YouTube back in the day. This is more evidence of Scrim's earlier projects. Now on the flip side of things, there is also a song titled Chopper Season by Just Scrim. I'm not sure if this entry is just a typo or just talking about, you know, the Chopper City mixtape, but regardless, they both exist. Opal Ring Demo. 
Now, Opal Green dropped back in 2015 and it was a part of my liver will handle and my heart can't. The demo version of the song was found through Leafs and you could easily find it now. It's easily accessible. The earliest that my boy villains found that it was posted was about four and a half years ago. Grimm's YouTube channel. So there's a separate entry soon on the iceberg that refers to the DJ Scrim YouTube channel, but this refers to the channel that was made basically for A Man Rose From The Dead. Now it does seem to be an official YouTube channel that was created solely for A Man Rose From The Dead. You can find all the official lyric videos for the album on that YouTube channel, and the channel was actually created just a few months before the album fully dropped. I Am The Apocalypse SoundCloud version. Now, I Am The Apocalypse dropped back in 2016 and was a part of Kill Yourself Part 16. After listening a few times and researching, we found this post. The SoundCloud version has a shorter outro than all the other versions. And the reason for this is apparently they had just cut a feature out of the song that would have been Puya. Funny enough, in Ruby's verse, he actually mentions Puya by name and mentions Southside Suicide. But this wouldn't be the only time that they would have to cut a verse from a song as shown in the next entry. Arcophagus 3 Streaming Services Version. In short, the streaming version of the song basically just cut out Ramirez's verse. And if you haven't heard the verse already, stop what you're doing, peep the verse, go look it up. It's it's a banger verse, man. Island Knight, Suicide Boys, and Black Smurf, Cut Full of Flames, and Royal. So we're just going to go ahead and group these three entries together because they're essentially just a collection of songs that were unreleased by the boys. Now this channel right here actually has all of them with timestamps, but just to warn you guys, these are unreleased, so some of them like Cut Full of Flames, I believe, are unfinished. Sleepy Hollow. This song dropped back in 2014 on Tear Yourself Part 4. Now on the track list, the track is actually titled Slop and Chewed, but this YouTube channel Devsky has the red up version of the song. Not too sure if it was released like that originally, but there it is. Bingo featuring Suicide Boys, aka Zuckerberg. Off rip, I'm telling y'all, this song is, is not that great. Now it was originally leaked back in February of 2021, so that's where the Bingo title comes from. Now it was made by Tommy Cash, who is an Estonian rapper, features Diplo alongside the boys. Villains and I kind of agree that this is kind of a very annoying song. And even though we all love the boys, man, it is it's got to be one of the worst songs that they've been a part of. I swear Ruby and Scream are the only like saving grace for the song, but the song's still bad, man. Unreleased songs with Lil Peep. So villains already talked about as the bridges burn at the end of part one, but there actually does seem to be a song that Peep and Scrim made that never got officially released many years ago. But aside from that, we haven't found any other songs that they could have collabed on. But real quick, let's go back to the average Suicide Boys fan section to cover some entries that have been added since the last Iceberg video. Yin Yang Tapes. Now the Yin Yang Tapes are a series of four EPs, each with three songs, an intro, and various features. They each follow a seasonal theme starting with spring going on to summer and so on. Now for the month of May, they all dropped within a week of each other starting on May 5th. The tapes do start with 89 and 90, which is possibly referring to Scrim and Ruby's Earth years respectively. Now I know for villains and myself included, these uh, reaction videos really kind of put us on the map and so these are always going to be legendary tapes to us. It was a big divided topic of discussion for a while, I'm not going to lie, since the theme they went for this collection of songs was a Memphis font style. Me, myself, initially thought it was Freddy Dread, that first track that I heard, and I was quickly educated upon uh, Memphis font. Now the pitch changes to their voices seem to really throw people off at first, but all these months later and the tapes are pretty much well loved at this point. Getter Collapse. <laughs> Sad, eh? So Getter is the producer that actually produced Radical Suicide back in 2016 for the boys and they would also end up putting out a song together that same year titled Too High. Since then there hasn't really been any collaborations between the two. By the way the I'm Unknown tag is actually his. Sambo Backrack. Now Sambo is actually the audio engineer and co-producer for the boys who's actually been around for quite some time. Highly recommend watching this interview back from 2020 where he goes in depth about how he met the boys. Last I checked the video was just under 8k views so go ahead show that video some love. In that interview he also goes over his composing process which if you didn't know he composed the ending of Finding Shelter in My Larynx off of Razor 5. And whenever you hear that it's a oh, smash. smash. That's his producer tag and not scrims. Now going back to the hardcore fan layer. Concerts for no one. In the Nardwar interview, the boys revealed that the least amount of people that they performed for was nobody. Starting out, they would perform in Baton Rouge a few times, knowing that no one would be there, but they thought it was good practice anyways. They also go on to say that Scrimp's dad was the only person in attendance. Suicide Boys Post Malone. But back in 2018, these guys actually linked up and took a few videos and pictures together. They currently don't have a song together, but they comment on each other's posts and whatnot, so only time will tell. 
Suicide Boys comic book. So the Nardwar video kind of functions as a mini iceberg in itself if you haven't seen it already. Definitely recommend watching that video for tons more info and bits on them. In the interview though, he actually gifts the boys a comic book of themselves that comes from a site called Cold Fact and was actually created by a guy named Ethan Dupluy. Pluey? I, I hope I'm saying that right. I don't know how to say it. Now Cold Fact actually creates a lot of artwork, comics, and a lot of other cool stuff with different artists. The actual comic that was gifted to the boys though is basically the I Hunt Myself for Persona video just in panel form. Last time we checked though, the comic book was sold out. Grim Coach Sports. So Scrim did actually coach his little brother's basketball team. There's actually quite a bit of video footage online of Scrim balling up. I just gotta ask man, what is Scrim not good at? Ruby is a movie buff. In multiple videos and interviews, he's mentioned his love for movies, especially Star Wars, quite a few times. Y'all remember his Padawan braid? Yeah, you do. Grim was an in-house producer for Republic Records. So in part one, Villains actually mentioned the Complex article that was released back in 2018, but didn't talk about what Scrim mentioned in the article. In the article, Scrim talks about being a producer for Republic Records, a huge label. Back around 2013, there has been speculation that he produced a song for French Montana, but there hasn't been any confirmation. Being a producer for Republic Records actually prevented Scrim and Ruby from making music together until the contract was up. Grim really has been grinding and working his ass off for such a long time and it makes their success story even more impressive. But he did dislike his time there. Butterfly Boacher, a better song. Usually we wouldn't be playing clips but we'll make an exception here so villains edit in the video right here man. <laughs> On to the next entry though, Avant Guard featuring Suicide Boys. This was actually Jay Green's song that dropped with the boys back in 2015. Avant Guard 2 would eventually drop in 2017 featuring Ramirez. Before I go, reminder, subscribe to everybody involved in this, follow everybody, fuck with everybody man, everybody's fucking amazing. Make sure y'all fuck with me, subscribe to my channel, follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Gray to the motherfucking grave. That's all the info I got for you guys, but now to pass it on to my brother, the absolute legend in the underground, Ruby's nephew. And no, he's not actually Ruby's nephew. Yo, shout out to my boy VTG Akuma for his part in the iceberg. Thank you so much, bro. Unfortunately, though, Ruby's nephew isn't here for his entry. So in his place, I'll be doing his part of the iceberg. But just, just give me one second, guys. Oh, all right. That transition, though. I'm excited to be here. Let's get this going. Next up, the G59 cult member lair. Ruby hates cabbage. So all in all, basically, it's just a comment that Ruby made on a post about cabbage. I guess he was just offended by it. <laughs> Who did Ruby watch die when he was 14? So back in 2015, Young Death Low Life dropped. And on the song Handsome Suicide, Ruby's verse basically sums up as when he was 14, he saw a dead body up close and it went on to traumatize him. It might seem like a far-fetched thing, but it just doesn't seem like something he would make up. So pretty crazy to me. TPC Forever, a dedication to Dirt, DJ Scrim YouTube channel. So this is a YouTube channel we briefly mentioned earlier. This does appear to be the first YouTube channel created by Scrim approximately 13 years ago in 2010. There's only one video on the channel titled TPC Forever, a dedication to Dirt, which is also the name of the song in it that has a part one and a part two. It's a bit difficult to tell, but some pictures do feature a much younger Scrim and Dirt, who was a friend of Scrim's, who unfortunately passed away and is referenced in a song that will go much deeper later on. I no longer feel the razor guarding my heel part two background excerpt during the time this iceberg was created it was questioned at the time what the background was just recently it was found on reddit by former entry 7606 that the words on the cover are the lyrics for rougarou on tragic love songs to study to volume five an absolute wild discovery and one of the latest additions to the iceberg actually which is pretty cool mopsick so Mobsick is just another band that Ruby was in for a short amount of time around 2013 and it's actually still possible to find some of their songs if you dig deep enough through SoundCloud. DJ Scrim SoundClick So SoundClick is just a website that's basically similar to all the other streaming services and it was used by Scrim to sell his beats and upload 770 to be exact with the very last one being uploaded on May 30th of 2016 and the very first upload was around July 2012. He's got just under 800,000 plays and 327,000 views. So if you want, go run those numbers up. Little Shark Collabs. 
So Lil Shark was a young artist who unfortunately took his own life in 2021 rest in peace he worked with scrim on about two different occasions producing beats on 50 shots and artisan the blue mask in the music video for the song tsunami it looks like ruby's dressed in a coat and a blue mask pacing back and forth before putting his face to the camera this seems to be the first appearance of the mask as it would make multiple appearances in videos after this but stopped after just a short while untitled box set so this refers to a super rare yet inauthentic box set of vinyls that there's actually a YouTuber who uploaded an unboxing of this set. And as you can imagine, since this is super rare, the video has barely any views. So please go over there, run that up and tell the homie that the villain sent you. Ruby the Cherry, name origin. It probably comes from a song called Ruby Soho by the pop punk band Rancid. And the cherry part mostly comes from the cherry end of a blunt. And it ain't no secret that that boy got some iron lungs because god damn do he smoke a lot. So if you put that together, you get Ruby the Cherry. Ruby falling down at shows. So I'm assuming this is just talking about where Ruby would pretend to fall over on stage. Similar to the whole Ruby level dub thing where he performs memoirs of a gorilla. Remixes of songs that don't exist. Uh, what the fuck? There's absolutely nothing that can be found on this. Whatever, I guess. DJ Scrim, nigga. So while digging, of course, we ran into some of Scrim's older stuff. But Jesus Christ, this has got to be the oldest song we've ever come across. Released all the way back in 2010. This is a tag said by the epic voice that used to be on every song to get the track hyped up. DJ Scrim. Not sure when it was last used, but clearly this is way before even any Suicide Boy stuff. Also, the few comments on the video mentioned the reuse of some verses and lyrics in other songs. Ruby solo lyric videos. Oh yeah, Jack Boy! So this refers to all the songs on Tragic Love Songs to Study To Volume 5, having lyric videos posted on the official Doug Boy YouTube channel. Shout out to Junkie Archives as always for these. So, with Existential Himes for the average Sigma Volume 9 soon to be released within a couple days of this recording, we should expect some more solo lyric videos. Voodoo. Dirty Dirty Remix featuring Chucky What. This is just another really rare song that dropped back in 2012 and it features Ruby and Chucky What. At first, I thought it was just another name for Scrim, but it just doesn't sound like him and uh, I don't believe they've ever featured Chucky What on another song, so this just might be the only song. I mean, not sure who he is, but not a bad song. So there we go. There goes uh, my contribution to this beautiful project. I just want to thank my brother and everyone else who uh, put in their efforts towards this amazing project. G59 to the grave, baby. Let me pass it on to the one and only, the homie, Ghost Type. The death of Hefe. Hefe is a person that Ruby explains in the song I Miss My Dead Friends, was a very close friend who tragically passed away in a car crash. In the very same song, Scrim mentions Dirt, who we spoke about earlier. We didn't mention this in the Ruby tattoo section before, but Ruby does have a tattoo on his thumb dedicated to Hefe. Rest in peace to both of these guys. Next up, 99 to 2000. So this could be a reference to the song Gold 99 to 2000, or it could just be another producer tag by Scrim. Scrim's deleted Twitter. So while searching for another entry deeper in the iceberg, I found an old Twitter that Scrim used to use. It was at book DJ Scrim. It's not deleted, it's just been inactive since 2012, but he's had a couple of these as mentioned in the Nardwar interview. DJ Scrim was one of them, as well as at Scott Sucks, which is an entry itself on the iceberg. Years ago around the release of I Wanna Die in New Orleans, Scrim got engaged and he posted it. That's pretty much it. Some of the parasocial fans on Reddit got all weird and stalkery. Don't don't do that, just stay out of people's personal lives. Next up we have No Small Job. No Small Job refers to a short film that Ruby was a part of back in 2011. It was made for the 48 hour gorilla film contest in 2011, where he also gets credited for the score. There's a few more of these short films floating around if you're interested in that, go check them out. Next up we have Suicide Boys Facebook page origins. 
So this comment on the iceberg itself talks about how the Facebook page was actually started by a fan, but the boys came in and just took over the account for themselves. The first post was on July 11, 2016, and looking through the page itself, especially in the earlier days of it, they posted a lot of memes and stuff that basically promoted their music. Again, it was just a fan account at first. If it's any reference to their Facebook origins, they dropped a song not too long ago, a part of the Yin Yang winter tapes. I deleted Facebook a long time ago, even though the page still regularly updates with the promotion of their music. Next up we have Gray Five Nines Kid F H U Gray Percent uh, parentheses I'm not reading this. <laughs> so again huge shout out to the homie Gage who created the iceberg. There was tons of issues looking up this entry but upon asking him he said that the reason for the entry was so that you can see the random sequence on the alternate cover of the long-term effects of suffering. Next up, we have the Southside Suicide individual music videos. Uh, not 100% sure on why this is so low in the iceberg, but this refers to the video uploaded to the boys' channel on Christmas of 2015. It's basically music videos going in song order of Cold Turkey, Muddy Blunts, Running Through the Seventh with My Woadies, Gluttony, and finally Southside Suicide. Moving on, K Gotti G59 Affiliation. So there's more than one entry on K Gotti, but essentially he was one of the original G59 members until a beef happened. He's featured on quite a few of their earlier stuff, like Ruby's Pluto tape and other early Suicide Boys songs, but that's basically it. They clapped a few times. X Y is K Gotti. Sadistic is a name you'll see on a few Suicide Boys tracks, and this is basically K Gotti. Not only, as we just mentioned, have the boys and him not collabed in years, but he also seems to have stopped making music altogether. TPC mixtapes. Uh, researching this, the only thing that really makes sense is TPC Forever. It's mentioned that Dirt's name is Taylor Paul Chisholm. I'm assuming that's how it's pronounced. So I'm assuming this is a reference to something he used to work on when he was alive, possibly. At Scott Sucks. As referenced earlier, this is the handle that used to be an old Instagram of Scrims that has since been deactivated. Looks like he used to post a lot of his old music on there. Next up on the iceberg, we have Rear Album Covers. Basically, their physical albums have art on both sides, and that's what this is referring to. Omen 13 Beef. So this, along with the Black Smurf Beef, which we'll go over, were both discussed a little in part one. A little recap though, As the Bridges Burn was meant to be a song for the boys and Lil Peep extremely early in their career, until Omen 13 and Craig Zen got a hold of the song, added verses, and dropped it. Shortly after this though, Omen said somewhere that he doesn't like the boys and how they didn't represent the message that they claimed to. Pretty petty beef if you ask me, but that's about it. It doesn't seem as though the boys were ever cool with Omen in the first place. Next up we got Adi P the Cool Cat. Just another name for Ruby, basically another variation of Adi Enough to Snow Leopard. Next we have at DJ Scrim. I believe we briefly mentioned this but this was just another Scrim Twitter handle and we already discussed DJ Scrim and what Scrim went by primarily when he began making music. Moving on we have Taz. I don't know how long it's been since we covered the Neighbors Ate My Zombies entry, but we briefly mentioned Taz there. Taz is an artist who Ruby worked with in a tape called Digital Diseases in 2012, and this is where Neighbors Ate My Zombies came from. I don't believe Taz makes music anymore though. The boys did marriage counseling. So I believe we mentioned this article during part one, but basically Billboard interviewed the boys in preparation for Sing Me a Lullaby, My Sweet Temptation. In it, they talked about how doing marriage counseling genuinely helped them develop their communication skills. Real talk. Huge props to them for being vulnerable and honest, helping more people than they think with this because owning up and needing to improve your communication skills is something a lot of people are afraid to do. And if the boys did it, then you shouldn't be ashamed to do it either. Anyway, that's all from me. Thank you so much for having me a part of this. And I'm going to pass this on to Reaction Therapy, the absolute GOAT. <laughs> Hey everybody, it's Tom Stevens, your resident psychotherapist from Reaction Therapy on YouTube. Such a privilege to be here today. Shout out to my man, Villains, who has created the best Suicide Boys iceberg video I had ever seen and had to comment on it. And he was gracious enough to say, hey, why don't you help out with the next one? So here I am to do my best to learn along with you because a lot of this stuff, 
I don't even know yet. So we're gonna go through this bit by bit, as I say in my videos, without further ado. Ruby spitting fire with scrim is hashtag drug flow to intro. So in this short Instagram live from back around 2016, scrim throws on a beat and Ruby starts rapping. And at the time, a lot of people thought this was a song that was gonna drop. What it actually was, was Ruby rapping the lines that scrim wrote and rapped back in the hashtag drug flow to intro that dropped in 2013. Hotline featuring Suicide Boys. I've seen on quite a few pages people talk about how rare this song is. Apparently made back in 2015 or 16, it features Israel and was produced by IC what a name i just said that wow i tried to find why the song was so rare but my best guess is it was taken down for a while at some point numbing the pain because nerves are overrated featuring suicide boys this song is listed as being put on genius in 2017 but it sounds way older so i'm not sure when it was actually put up this one has one of the best beats i heard in a while go give it a listen that's villains talk and i haven't heard it and it's time for me to give that one a listen Datpiff uploads. So Datpiff is probably the most known site that's been up for almost 20 years at this point that basically is a free music download site. Obviously nothing here was put up by the boys themselves and there's just a small mix of their songs on the site. Typos on album covers. I couldn't find any typos on the album covers, but apparently their merch has had multiple cases of incorrect spelling. Like Long Dong for London. <laughs> Long Dong. Is that on purpose? That one had to be on purpose, bro. Ain't no way. All right, it's time for the final layer of the iceberg. I can't believe I get to intro this. And it's called, why the, f why the, f why the F are you here? You know I can't say that. Crack Addiction, volume 365. This comes from the very short Splash interview where Ruby is asked how the boys linked up with Travis Barker. And he mentions how they were in Mississippi selling a mixtape that they just dropped named Crack Addiction, volume 365. This is obviously a troll, but Ruby's dry delivery makes it sound real. They troll a lot with his three minute interview and it's pretty funny. So go check it out if you haven't already. I've got to check that out because I could see Ruby doing that and knowing who i am as a mental health professional and having been blessed with meeting suicide boys both scrim and ruby and getting my hat signed by scrim i could see ruby talking like that quack this refers to the legendary ad lib and bar on the song avalon that we mentioned briefly in part one makes a whole lot more sense now that we know ruby's also ego is named duck boy they have so many names i can't keep up with with who they are so I just go with whatever I hear. Noam is Scrim Ruby. Weto, Blanco, Ruby de Cherry. We could just go on and on. I need to go back and watch that other one. Ruby de Cherry. This refers to a short video that Ruby made years ago in an airport with one of those neck pillow things worn the wrong way. <laughs> he basically says his name is Ruby de Berry and that he's been doing inappropriate things to your pets. Ruby. This is an Uzi. So this is probably from a video or it's referring to the first thing Ruby says on gloss of blood. It's not the same, but close enough. Suicide boys. So as you all know on this platform, they've gone a little soft. I don't think so. But I don't blame them. Obviously, you don't want that word coming up on the search. So the way people got around this was basically separating the words, as well as putting the accent mark thing in the E. And as you guys can see on a fresh account, it comes up right away. <laughs> Just type it in and try. Typing in the word also gives you a search result, but I'm guessing people have used the one with the E for so long now that it just took over. I'm grateful to be a part of this iceberg. Can't wait to see the full project. Villains, amazing work. Scrim, Ruby, thank you for allowing me to meet you and be a part of your music. And also Scrim, thank you so much for being a friend and such a great guy in terms of spreading mental health awareness to the world because that's what we do 
hop on over to Reaction Therapy, check out the content we have. Also on Patreon, we have a special tier just for Suicide Boys. I had to mention that because it's such a neat way to be able to get more and more Suicide Boys content and have you have a say-so in what we react to. Time for me to toss it over to my man Taunt and Mama Taunt. Take it away, you two. We're back. We are back. Villains, thank you for inviting us. We're here thank to you. speak on some G59 Matters Suicide Boys. Obviously, I know my stuff a little bit, but I got a mom over here who knows more than your average G59 fan, so... Actually, I, this year I did four shows in three different countries. Just came back from Red Rock's Grey Day. Yes, I am now a big fan. I wasn't in the beginning, to be honest, but you got me on to G59. There you go. Get your family into G59. The boy from Villains gave us a little script. So we're gonna be reading out some facts to y'all. Uh, I hope you guys pick up on something. Mom might be asking some questions along the way. I certainly will. Bear with me, we're jumping up and down the iceberg. Let's address the first one, gay suicide. <laughs> so gay suicide is basically a collection of every pause-worthy moment in the Suicide Boys history. The most famous being the line from New Profile Pick where Ruby says, me and my cousin fucking buzzing. But the community being the clowns they are, ignore the buzzing part and you have an extremely sus line right there. Me and my cousin. You know, fill in the blank, yeah. True. I rather not. I rather not. There's also a famous gay 5'9", so there you go, I guess. There's an unlimited amount of sus moments, but these are just a few of them. Point two, Black Smurf, beef with the boys and especially Scrim. I think this is blown out of proportion. I think people are just taking them making music in 2016 and not really anymore to, oh my god, they have beef. Uh, Scrim even mentions him on Phantom Menace and Ghostman for that matter saying that he misses the time that they would just kick back, smoke a little green. Uh, so I think it's just, they're just doing their own thing. Some people say that the boys left them as soon as they got a little buzz. You can take it how you want it. I think people are just trying to nitpick in this situation. And I think they're all good and they just, you know, don't have to make music 24 seven. Ruby's iconic hats. As a lot of us know, Ruby always or nearly always wears a hat. And there's even videos of Ruby showing off his entire FTP foul play ng 59 like hat collection he has like a bunch of them and he's very proud of them this has also kind of spawned in a meme where there'd be like a song that they would play a music video and every time ruby would touch his hat the song would play faster oh, really? because he used to touch his hat a lot he still does it but uh yeah that's basically it i mostly see ruby using the hat to cover his eyes and that is kind of iconic too i think true true well, next up, Suicide Boys were better in 2015. We talked a lot about that. We have. It's a song off their latest album, Sing Me Lullaby by My Sweet Temptation. It basically takes a stab at the people that have said that their music has changed a lot throughout the years, which it has. And good and it did. Yeah, but people always want to see the negative in it and they don't want people to change, even though it's been over eight years. <laughs> so, you know, it's a little bit of people just trying to hate on them for changing but at the same time everyone changes and if you're a fan and you grow with them i think that's even more beautiful than if you're just you know hating on them changing and if you listen want to listen to the old stuff it's still there you can that's still definitely to true and i'm maybe one of the newest fans just like two years ago you made me listen to avalon and that was the start of our reaction channel i did listen to some old stuff mainly because you make me react to it but also i liked a lot of it not everything but to have it like in a historical order or to know where they came from i think it's good to listen to the old stuff but it's perfectly okay if you like the new stuff better like i do exactly next up ftp and g59 are terrorist organizations i don't think it is but allegedly even the government sent zach a letter telling him to stop maybe he did something with the content that was before my time actually i do say ftp a lot because i think fuck the population is something just do what you want to do just don't harm anybody but what's up with all this basically ftp in the beginning people also thought if this was just a brand by the boys but yeah like you mentioned it's zach's brand it has a lot of designs that sometimes just go overboard or at least people would think it is overboard because it goes against the norm it's the, like you said the fuck the population brand it's some of it it's just not for the the average joe walking around that's so, the whole point that's exactly the whole point so allegedly the government sent zach a letter and you know 
That's pretty wild. It's pretty wild. Also, the villains did some more research because I got some on the script. He says that he wouldn't be surprised if there's actually some back into this because apparently the FBI has registered Juggalos as a criminal gang. And he's also found an old comment on an Instagram post that will be on your screen right now stating exactly this someone asked to scream ruby you own g59 i tried looking up for it i couldn't find it to which scrim replies g59 was something i'd rather not get into detail about 13 years ago before we even did music now personally i don't know anything about this it's in the script so I, i'm assuming this has been floating around i don't want to speculate on this but maybe you guys have some speculation in the comments so let us know well next up another thing i do not understand Amazon Ruby, what's that? Can I order Ruby on Amazon now? Is he like a doll? What's that? Technically, yes, no. Um, there is this thing that you could buy off of Amazon that would make your grocery list or just answer basic questions for you, like how is the weather right now? And people started making memes out of this. It started with some famous celebrities and it ended up also including Ruby and Scrim for that matter. Basically, you would ask like something like, yo, what's the weather? And then a clip of Ruby or Scrim would say something back so they would take out of context clips from them put them in this commercial that was introducing this amazon feature oh and it would just go a little viral 2070 was just a simpler time back then it was really funny looking back at it now you know it's a little outdated but hey it really is outdated six years ago all right next up scrims eyeballs on the my liver will handle what my heart can't album cover uh, i'm gonna show you the picture right now you see it? I'm gonna give you three more seconds. Yeah, but what's the big deal about it? Basically, you could see Scrim's eyes on the wow. picture. And I think a lot of people have never noticed it. I don't remember the first time I noticed it, but when it's on your phone, it's a small picture. You don't really see it. But when someone tells you and you see it for the first time, it's, it's like a, oh shit, I didn't, I didn't know that type vibe. So I think that's why it's on, on the iceberg. And okay, I think it would be more special if you could see Ruby's eyes, by the way. But Fair enough. Next up on the iceberg is the Parodies by Socks Pictures. This is a, a Russian channel, very small, it was created in 2015. And they did a few of the Suicide Boys in parodies. A uh, few to name are Second Hand, Nail to the Cross Magazine and they're very well done very well edited they only have like 10,000 views on it so go check them out if you want to just looked at it and it is funny but i do know somebody else who did a very nice suicide boys mashup all right next up and shout out to the villains for setting me up with this one talking about it with my mom but you know the <laughs> fuck bitches get death saga has a very interesting cover art uh which i will not be showing my mom right now i already seen you it already several seen times it. i think everyone has seen it shout out to the guy on reddit who found the original video but if i see or if the villains see this video i have a huge drop off at this exact moment i know what y'all freaky ass is doing so stay your ass right here <laughs> The next thing we're gonna talk about are Scrim's cloud goggles. I know what that is, but maybe you wanna explain it to the audience? I will. Basically, they're the white goggles that he used to wear with the black lenses. In pretty much all the interviews around the 2016-17 era, you could say that Kurt Cobain made these a little famous. I do know that. That yeah. was my time. He used to wear those, and I think it's just a very classic look. Scrim with the dreads and the, the goggles and the black hoodie. You know, I had them when I was young. I did not. Yeah. This and just like the tricolor camel fits that you used to wear, just staples of the 2016 fashion, you could say. Now we have a point that I'm very passionate about. It's the Scrim loses his mind video. Basically, it starts off with, are you filming me or are you fucking on your phone? And there's just a bunch of clips put back to back to back. One of my favorite all time Ruby clips is when he starts freestyling on a Scrim V and he just makes it a little sus. And then he says, I do what I want, whatever. And then you see Scrim chasing him. I think if you're a Suicide Boys fan, you've probably seen this video, but it's just, it's just a classic and funny. I do get Boys. Scrim though. It's very relatable, but it, it made for great content. <laughs> Next stop, Suicide 6. So Seed of Six is a rap group out of Memphis who, if you've seen part one, you may recognize as the two guys with DJ Paul in the Vlad interview. They're actually DJ Paul's nephews, and in 2018, what they did was take some of the boys' songs and remix them. Hence the mixing of the names Suicide Six was the name of the mixtape. This was pretty much a precursor to the beef with DJ Paul because the boys got upset at Seed of Six, which led to DJ Paul coming out defending his nephews, being upset at the boys sampling 3-6. 
Next on the iceberg is Poydras, the lyric video by Cheddar, featuring the boys. It dropped in June of 2022, and it features some of Mardi Gras and, you know, people doing some, some wild shit, some drugs, you know, do what you want to do. I want to prolong this, uh, though, by saying Cheddar has a lot of music videos where Scrim, for example, just pops it in. A long way from the bottom is one where he dresses up as Scrim, has the tats, and then Scrim comes mm -hmm. in in the end. Great music video, great song as well. Go check that out. Another W for the villains putting me on this topic with mom next to me. As Scrim always says, it's not great minds think alike, it's, it's big dicks think alike. There is this picture apparently floating around the internet. My cookies on my PC cannot find this because I'm such an innocent human being, right mom? Yeah, right. Um, so search it up at your own discretion. I can't find it, but I'm sure the villains will put a censored perhaps Well, you picture. tried, so you better clear your history as well. Shit. What is Scrim not good at? That's a great question. That's a great question. Back in 2017, they were very active on Snapchat, as I said before. And he put up a few stories of like him playing sports, especially basketball. Everything doing in one take. He would just shoot a couple threes, do some other good stuff in sports. And it basically became like hashtag. Hashtags were pretty. They still exist, but they were bigger back then. Hashtag what is Scrim not good at? Well, I still need to get that one for one going with Scrim. But that's besides the point. I Maybe he's a little scared of your boy. Um, yeah, right. They were all in one take, as he claimed. And there even was a hashtag at one point that Scrim should run for president. Um, we haven't gotten that yet, but hey, it can still be. Mm -hmm. Scrim's dread on eBay. Actually, I saw the Nard War interview. That was really funny. And Scrim claimed someone ripped out a dread and was selling it on eBay. He might just have been trolling because there's no paper trail on it. And to be honest, they were trolling a lot in that interview. Not even ghosts are this empty music video. Uh, at the time of editing this, their latest music video was shot by Dill 35 millimeter on my script there by the villains. It says, go check out our reaction on the channel. So I'm assuming he just made that to promote our own channel. Thank you, villains. I love you. <laughs> so nicely done. It's just insane how far the boys have come. Obviously, looking back at their old music videos, very low budget. Uh, that was like the aesthetic, the vibe. And nowadays should be looking like full on blockbuster movies with actual progression also in their own story. So great to see and I can't wait to see what we get more. Beam me up, Scotty. That was always said by Captain Kirk in Star Trek, but it's also a produced attack of Scott Scrim. It is also mentioned in the recent Nard War interview. Why do they always have weird long song names? I don't think this was ever specifically answered by them, but if I had to take a little guess, uh, they still do it, but back in the day, they did it a little more. They had these very weird long song names, and I always thought of it as a way to keep it more underground newer people they would see such a long title and they would get overwhelmed or they would get weirded out so the people that would really fuck with them would click on it and they would stay with them and people that would not listen to it because of the title were also the people that they wouldn't want as fans that's always how i interpreted it maybe you guys have your own opinion on it let us know in the comments but uh yeah i don't think this has ever been clarified by them max back archives so they talked about Max before. He's a videographer and a photographer for the boys. They had issues finding Tumble accounts, but now they found a lot. We saw him at Grey Day this year in Amsterdam and in Hamburg. And I have to say, it's a lovely guy and he does have a Patreon. Go check it out. How Suicide Boys transcended their darkness to become unlikely saviors. This is the title of a article about them in the Revolvers magazine. Basically, it's the irony of the Suicide Boys being named the Suicide Boys and ending up saving people's lives or at least having a very good impact on them. There's a story in this magazine. The story is very bitter and sweet. So if you really want to read it, please do. It's a good read overall, but it's also very sad. So viewer's discretion advised. But again, great article, check it out. Suicide Girls. This one is not so safe for work, ladies and gentlemen, so watch out. Long before the Suicide Boys, there were Suicide Girls. Basically, it's a lovely adult service agency kind of thing where you would pay for one of these girls and, and their photos and videos. You know, you get the point. Well, maybe this is kind of the OnlyFans before even OnlyFans existed. How the hell do you know about OnlyFans? Well, I'd rather not say. Um. Okay, go search it up if, if you're really that curious, but you know, only after this video. Again, your freaky ass has to finish this video before you finish yourself. Speaking of ass though. Oh, don't do this. Last point for us. 
Scrim eats ass. He's a fellow, fellow man of, of culture, as some would say. A shout out to Vincent Vallis4879. What a name. This was the first video uploaded to the boy's channel. It's an absolutely legendary clip where Scrim just basically talks about, you know, you gotta bleach. You gotta bleach. Oh. Um, the thing. It's not stipulated that she has to have a clean shaven ass. Absolutely. Hold up. That's like automatic. I saw that video numerous times. This was in an interview that they did. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff in interviews. It's a great interview. Go check that out. It's very old. It's 2014. It's been re-uploaded since then. So, you know what? I'll excuse the people. You can click off the video real quick to check out the script meets ass video. Yeah, but, but as long as they come back, right? As long as they come back. There you go. Well, I guess we're going to a point of too much information, I think. So maybe we better wrap this up and give somebody else yeah. a chance to do something. The boys from Villains kind of set us up there, you know, speaking with the mom about, about that stuff. Hey. Well, they know if they watch our reaction channel, they know that we kind of have the same synergy together because you do it all the time. Speaking of which, hey, we got to plug ourselves a little bit. Check us out if you want to. Take care, everyone. Thank you, Villains, again. Bye-bye. Be nice. You know, I could have done those entries myself, but, you know, T and Mama T, y'all are way funnier than I am. I'll wait to the end to thank you both again. There's only a few entries left, but first, this section of the video is going to be called the bonus entries. And basically what this is, corrections made from the first iceberg video because I didn't get every single thing correctly. And that is what this part of part two is going to be used for. So whole lot of shout outs coming there's over a thousand comments in the original iceberg video and this is just to show you guys that i really did read every single one of them and tried my best to respond to as many as possible there were so many coming in after a while that i just couldn't anymore and this is my way of just giving back to you guys so here we go oh and by the way uh night lavelle night lovell night lovell lavelle you are looking at Julian's pronunciation Damn. guide where we look at how to pronounce better some of the most mispronounced words in the world. If only I sounded like this, man. Yo, hold on, hold on. In British English, this is said as metery. Metery. Hold on, hold on. Metery. In American English, metery. including the name of the place. Right, you just got to stop with all that, like, in my ear. Metery. Metery. I've, I've seen some different ones. But I guess I got the... Most wrong one. And Ruby in the mid Aries. <laughs> Reasons for Chief Keef backing out. There was way too many conflicting stories on why Chief Keef backed out. But yeah, there were a ton of insights for some commenters and stuff like that. So shout out to y'all. An update on Puya's situation with the boys. Obviously, they're chilling. They're all good. Puya came out multiple times during grade A 2023. And uh, yeah, nothing wrong there all the hurricane references of course what i meant when i said there were no official comments i meant like interviews and stuff like that but yeah you will find so many references to the hurricanes throughout all the boys songs i mean there's so many as you guys mentioned in those comments shout out to fxami i don't know how to say this 797 guy peeing in ruby's mouth so this is actually a bit wrong what he actually meant was in the video the getter what the frick toured vlog 10 getter who is both Yes, the sud dude guy, as we showed earlier. And I can't wait for the comments for the people who didn't watch until this part. <laughs> he is also known as Tara Reed, and you'll know him. He's a rapper, obviously. He makes a lot of tracks with people adjacent to the boys like Puya. So go check him out, please. He's awesome. And yeah, in the video, Ruby drinks his own pee and Scrim punches a guy at the very end. It's hilarious. And of course, this was going to be an entry on the iceberg. Two very iconic moments in this video. It's real short, by the way. So definitely go watch it. ZKC8. The Boards of Canada sample for Klaus's Witnesses and other songs, as mentioned in this comment right here. So shout out to you for doing the research for me. I appreciate this a lot. M. Riordan3388. The freaky movie song is actually Don't Trust Anyone Off Live Fast Die Whenever. In the original iceberg, I had actually said the song was freaky by the boys and juicy j i believe and uh yeah that is not correct i actually got that one wrong and i didn't know this but i still got it wrong for some reason so uh shout out to you for the correction so shout out to rylick here all my life i wanted a chevy it's actually a three-part video so my fault for not mentioning that it also includes underwater malibu 
Shout out to Young Sidious. He mentioned the leaned out remixes that were made years ago. And yeah, this is basically a chopped and screwed version of the original Kill Yourself with a video to accompany it. Young Fuel Economy basically talks about how Kill Yourself Part 1 wasn't actually produced by Scrim, but instead by Kane Solo. So shout out to you. Nocturnal, shout out to you. True Till Death. Uh... In my defense, I never said me and Ghost Type can read, but <laughs> yeah, uh, Scrim Tat on his chest says true till death, not love till death. I am so sorry about that. Cine3696 mentions this Russian rapper named Kizaru, and basically Scrim produced a song for this guy. So huge shout out to my brother M270, a great subscriber who's been on board with us for a minute, and he told me about this Easter egg in the Bossier City Kidnap Victims video, and as you guys can see in a frame right here, it says a little trauma can be illuminating which is a song off razor five big shout out n270 i know you're watching brother thank you so much electronica pr shout out to you i'd mentioned this situation that happened back when the ftp video had dropped so in the video ruby burns a cigarette on his wrist obviously he also says that in the song and it basically became a snapchat challenge for a while uh don't don't be an idiot and do that please like that's really dumb <laughs> So don't, don't do that. That's just stupid, bro. Shout out to multiple people. They'll be on the screen. Everybody who talked about this in the comment section of the first videos. Basically, there was an entry called Drillery. What it is, is one of the links in their SoundCloud bio. And uh, yeah, so pretty obvious with that said play on Drillery. Shout out to Liliana, but the second L is a seven, who gave me the clips for something that Snot and the boys had planned. So yeah, yet another unreleased collab on the list. Basically, they had put up a snippet or something like that. But uh, yeah, Snot and the boys would have had something that probably isn't coming out at all tarzan the goat the legend actually had ruby give him a song in a way for his birthday so insane entry right here i'll wait to the very end to give thanks to my guy tarzan because this video in short is not possible without him he had left a comment and ruby had responded saying that they will drop this song on his birthday just because he mentioned it was his birthday in the comments so pretty awesome there that's like a one in a million iceberg entry there were so many comments and so many things i'm sure i missed a few so shout out to everybody who left something now for this section we're doing entries that were not on the iceberg because this iceberg has been made over a long period of time and been updated several times but there's new things that happen every day it seems with the boys so these are entries that are not yet on the iceberg that i know people are gonna bug me about in the comments if i don't mention them so let's go meeting ruby and scrim reddit stories so this started happening recently where people started making up creepy pasta sounding stories on the subreddits about how they met ruby and scrim and it twisted into some like wacky adventure type thing man listen i don't know y'all are weird as hell but it's pretty funny and there's some good reads here obviously they're not real because just read them you'll see scrim unreleased Shortly after the MSG show, which was incredible by the way, Scrim had put up this snippet on his story, which I don't believe was leaked, unlike the other stuff. Hopefully I can find the tweet where he mentions his future music sounding like yeet type or, or something like that. When, when it comes to leaks, just chill, you guys, because we already had a whole situation with that. And uh, yeah, just relax with all that, bro. Lonely Boy. So this is the latest project teased by Scrim multiple times, and it seems to be dropping very soon at the time of editing this. If not, it's probably dropped already. I know I'm taking a long time. I'm sorry, guys. But uh, yeah, Lonely Boy is going to be Scrim's next project. Staff Workforce. Staff Workforce is Scrim and Shadow's clothing brand that they started late in 2022. And uh, yeah, real expensive, but I, uh, I copped a few things. I'm not going to lie. Ruby's Gray Goggles. You know the thing where you make a hole with your index finger and thumb and like you hold them up to your face like glasses? You know the thing where you go like 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 this? Or sometimes they, they make fun of you like this? I'm I'm probably projecting, but I look so stupid right now. Yeah, that's pretty much Ruby's thing now, and they're called the gray goggles because, you know, you're basically looking through the G59 hand sign. Also, as a bonus, I had to mention Ruby's rave dance like the kick move he always does on stage. Uh, You know, classic Ruby. Ruby Scrim AI picture which is not actually AI, it's just the Revolver Magazine pic. So on Twitter, the account at G59Alyssa posted this picture of Ruby and Scrim holding hands, and Ruby then reposted it, claiming it to be AI, which honestly, for a whole day or two, people genuinely thought this was an AI-generated picture. But it didn't take very long for it to be confirmed as real, because it was one of the few pictures taken for their spotlight in the Revolver Magazine October issue, which, by the way, includes the Suicide Boys Transcended Their Darkness interview that we mentioned earlier. Sponge Boys. 
these are easily some of the funniest videos I've listened to in a while. So shout out to Huffles who's going crazy right now with these. But basically over the summer, AI covers of all types of people from YouTubers to fictional characters to celebrities. We're getting tons of views from just how accurate and real they sound. And so of course the boys were going to get covers from the cast of SpongeBob. The first one I stumbled onto was Antarctica and yo, bro, please go listen to these. I was dying for like an hour straight listening to all of them and show love to Huffles, man. Get his subscribers get his views up there because these are hilarious i want to see him keep these up please shout out to the homie tarzan for linking this reddit post which basically talks about how young leash and suicide boys were going to have maybe a song or maybe something it seems like they were posted on zach's ig story and they were all in the studio at the same time but uh obviously it's been years since then and nothing has came about it shout out to reddit user 04 james 05 for posting this video that is actually Scrim's high school graduation now. I've talked to this guy in DMs and he's an extremely cool dude and seeing everybody just get on him for finding this video is really upsetting because he's a really cool dude and obviously he's not meaning to go extremely far when it comes to uh, just doing the research to find this absolutely insane find and this is literally deepest pit of the iceberg level as, as far down as you can get. So um, yeah, there's that here we are for the last few entries of the iceberg thank y'all so much for just sticking around to this point let's end off this journey right and let's get right back into it at Uside Boy 8995 so in early 2023 youtube got rid of usernames and implanted the handle system for every account and basically in the weeks leading up to it if you didn't customize your own handle youtube would give you an automated one i'm pretty sure you can change it as there's an update to this entry but basically if you didn't before the system was officially placed they'd use the first few letters of your original username and if it was appropriate pair it with a couple numbers it looks like at the time whoever runs the youtube channel for the boys didn't customize the handle resulting in Uside side boy 8995 being their username or maybe they did customize it but i doubt it because a lot of usernames and comment sections follow this same pattern it's not an easter egg or anything trust me and that seems to be correct because as an update to this entry the handle has since been adjusted to at suicide boys dash g59 ruby is a cross dresser I just want to preface this entry by saying there's nothing wrong with cross-dressing. Just do what makes you happy, bro. It don't really matter what anybody else thinks. Just don't be inappropriate because ain't nobody trying to see that. So there was a picture posted, I don't know where, back in 2014. But as you can see on the screen, it's a very young Ruby in a dress and lipstick. Clearly meant to be a bit of a joke, but in the song Gloom, Ruby does mention cross-dressing for a bit of wordplay that's explained well by this comment on the sub right here. Curb Goop on Magnolia, the legendary artifact. For those who haven't heard this verse before, I actually got a little bit of a treat for y'all. So let's roll it. Do rag villains are in the building. Yes. Magnolia, I've heard this song already. I have never heard this. Yeah, let's just get right into it. I yeah, think, I don't uh, know. I keep hearing a whole bunch of stuff about this song. What the hell is this? <laughs> Ruby and Scream had a pretty good verse. Ruby and Scream, yeah, they were. It was pretty good. <laughs> like it was regular, just solid verse verses. Uh, but what the hell was that at the end? <laughs> Kerbla Goop, yeah, the man that in the Nardwar interview they said they have forty five songs 
cooking with Crib the Goop ready to be released. Bow, you didn't honey, know bow. why I was recording this. This is an entry for the iceberg. Oh, <laughs> and I got you because I didn't talk about it. It's one of the last entries of the iceberg. Wow. The Magnolias. We're probably in September right now. Whenever the video is out. I'm we, shocked. We are here one day after the first iceberg. In the first iceberg, you do actually see for a split second. I put up the copy pasta on the screen. Here it is. There you go. And they say all the ad libs. They say all the, with emojis. Obviously, I don't know what day it is that this iceberg is up. This this is part two right now. This is oh, like, yeah. technically we are doing part two. Yeah, right yeah, now. right now. That's, as you guys that's can a see. Weird inception type. Wow, so almost four thousand as of the release from yesterday. Yeah. That's and, pretty good. And we'll see how much it's at by yeah, the time yeah, for sure. Maybe we look back at this and go like damn. We never knew how far we'd come, or maybe it doesn't even get one more. Yeah, maybe it doesn't. This. Maybe it just stays at 3.9K. <laughs> yeah, we'll and, see. you know, regardless, part two is out and you guys are watching it. And I hope you guys have enjoyed. Yeah, it. yeah, for sure. That was Magnolia. I can't believe that garbage. <laughs> <laughs> On to the next entry. Yeah. No sauce. Ah, the scrim special. 20 nuggets, no sauce, just 20 dry nuggets. And you know what? There's a couple of videos of Scrim ordering his nuggets at drive throughs and yeah, that's basically it. He orders his nuggets with no sauce. <laughs> and it's, I don't know why, it's just the way he orders it is funny as eating on children. In the song Vietnam during Scrim's verse, he mentions eating children, but hey, wait a second, hold on, you see that? Yo, he says Scrimmy the villain. Man, who cares about the children part? Peanut butter and jelly acoustic. Ruby is a really good singer, man. Basically, someone recorded Ruby walking down the street, playing an acoustic guitar and singing this song while people basically were lined up on the street for their concert, I believe. But the lore for this song goes much, much deeper than just this video. It seemed like this was just a random song that Ruby made up on the spot, and I wouldn't blame you for thinking that because I thought the same until I looked into it. All the way back in 2009 when MySpace was like the most popular social media, Ruby had a page on there where I'm assuming he put up a ton of his stuff not sure if it was his personal account or not, but the page isn't up anymore. As we know, Slam Dungasaur was Ruby's original name when it came to first starting out his solo music endeavors, and the song Peanut Butter Pancakes is actually the song he sang in the video. The recorded version isn't accessible through his MySpace anymore, obviously it's not up. However, for one of the many student films that he used to participate in, the song is actually what plays during the credits at the end of the film. Now man, if y'all don't subscribe and leave a like for the amount of research I did for this entry, then I don't know, bruh. You know how many times I had people calling me a fake fan? It's time to give me my damn flowers. Suicideboysmerch.com. I'm gonna keep this real short and simple because not really much needs to be said. G59recordsmerchandise.com is the only real authentic merch shop for the boys. Everything else, including suicideboysmerch.com, is fugazi. It's a fugazi. It's fake. It's not real. It's, it's a scam. Don't buy from there. That's it. Simple. And Walmart, too. I don't know why they got merch, but obviously it's not real. So don't don't buy it. Unless you want to buy it. I mean, hey, do what you want with your money. I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to tell you what to do with your money. I mean, you seen these merch prices, bro? <laughs> they crazy. But I mean, if you want the real authentic thing, then, uh, well, you know what to do. Fake G59 members. Listen, bro, there's already a few entries at this point I couldn't find anything for. Just give me a break please because this is a lot of work and uh yeah i couldn't find anything on this but if y'all know then let me know in the comments and right there i just made my last edit on the actual timeline of the iceberg you guys can see it on the screen it's right there guys this is five months look at this timeline though oh my look like a christmas tree man just leaving it like that because this is a legendary timeline this is something i want to get tattooed on me because man for the past five months i wake up download edit record edit research edit did i mention i edited because yes I edited a lot. Anybody who's seen this right now, you're a real one. Nobody gets this far in our 30 minute long video and you're not a real one. That's impossible. So thank you so much for watching until this point. I want to 
say thank you to all the YouTubers who were so nice enough to say yes to me. I had 3K subs. I didn't have much. These all, every single person here, almost every single person here is way bigger than I am. And all these guys are incredible. I, I stand on the shoulders of giants. These guys, they, they made reactions and stuff like that for the boys, like really something to watch. And I, I owe a lot to them. Thank you so much for saying yes and recording and doing all that. Just thank you. Thank you to Fez Void for that intro. That was brother. I watched that like 20 times over and over. It, it's I never get tired of it. Thank you to Tarzan. This this whole video is not possible without you, Tarzan. If I get anything wrong, you guys can blame him because he checked all the information. <laughs> Thank you to Scrim for reaching out. I'm just going to leave it at that. You already know. Thank you, bro. Thank you to Ash for the thumbnail. He made the last one, too. So I know this one is I love this one. I, I love it a lot. And uh, he actually wanted this one to be the one for the part one. It looked very similar. So uh you got what you wanted right there, Ash. Thank you so much. Shout out to Eric, because this time last year, a couple months before that is when we started our journey with the Matt Black video. Almost nobody saw that. It has 2000 views now, but it took a while to get that. And that's we blew that out of the water with every video we've made since. So this is impossible without Eric. He started the journey. So thank you. He's he's right there. He's being an idiot. He's like, he's literally right there. <laughs> We seriously thank you for all the effort put by everyone when uh, when it came to creating this video and the entire project. Uh, everybody who gave their likes, yeah. their unlikes, their yeah. comments, everybody, shares. I mean, honestly, it's it's kind of like surreal just how yeah. you know how much uh love w that we see we have nothing but gratitude i mean give th give this man his credit you know what i mean this guy literally <laughs> every time i come here it's just straight see that meme i don't know if you want to edit it in I, the I, guy I, where he's like uh, editing the freaking in on the freaking all oh, all the the dude with the glasses yeah, yeah, yeah. the superhero with squad. the freaking matrix in the back and stuff yeah. yo this guy non-stop work and effort and just grind these entire five months uh, i mean this guy right here this guy right here you know what i'm saying so thank you to everyone we really really appreciate it and um shit let's take this shit to the top you let's know what go. i'm saying let's, let's go. go let's go man ton says something i was like yo i need to take a year-long break from youtube after this ton said i'm not having that i literally show you guys he said i'm not having that this is just a start Shout out to you, my brother, again. It's bittersweet because, like I said, it's been the past five months, so I'm giving it to you guys now. But this has been my thing alone here. It just all this time. Well, not really alone, but you guys get what I mean. It's just 5, 6 a.m. I'm here with this, and now it's not going to happen anymore. So it feels weird. One thing I learned after all this is that I still have more in me. It's so crazy. I, I smell like sewage right now. I have been grinding th these past couple days. Like I haven't eaten nothing. But for some reason, I still feel like I have more. I can keep going. And that's scary because I said in one of our videos that I want to be the best. And I meant it. Like I want to be great at this. Truly great, but time will tell and stay tuned. That's that's all I'm gonna say. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed your stay. And tell me what I got wrong in the comments because I know we got stuff wrong. <laughs> Inferno. Even if the finish line is far, or you have to push the car, push the car. Keep on marching on. Keep on marching on. Jesus, I'm sorry, Eric, for the fucking editing that you got to do on this shit.